steps. Um, Start. Yeah. I think you hit record twice. Uh, so. Yeah, you push this down on the side. So turn it on. Turn oh. it on. And then it's just the record button. Oh, okay. You can call the order of the roll call. Dr. Lisa. Lisa Craddock, that off. Here. Tiffany Hughes here. Brian Wolf. Here. Eric Fisher here. Brady Oxeter here. John Costry here. Bethlehem Brown here. Terry O'Connor here. Go ahead. No Evans. No. Oh. Who's the applicant? No. Okay. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a new member of PNC. I'm the wrong side of the table here. <laughs> you, so you're, you're fine for yeah. now. <laughs> um, so, two little. Um, Quick things here. First, we are going to. Just a second. Um, <coughs> sorry, my computer's done. My tablet's not acting. Okay. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to move to suspend our rule uh, section to rule A that requires agendas and materials be distributed 24 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, they were provided this morning and then we're going to have an, an amended material once we get some signatures here too. So that's a little bit of house cleaning keeping. Um, so I will move without objection to suspend that rule. Objections. Okay, next we are going to look at um, pursuant to our duties under 1202.04E, we are to review all requests for rezoning or variances from existing zoning or building regulations, such applications and the commission's recommendations shall be forwarded to council for final approval or disapproval. So that is why we're here today. Um, do, just looking at the agenda I have in front of me, we have minutes on there? Yes. We, okay. So we are going to go ahead and approve the minutes that should be in the packet. There's a couple little minor things okay. that she had pointed, that Lisa had sent over just a few minutes ago. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to point those out. Do I need to, did you get those? I just, I saw it on my phone. I don't know if anybody else saw it. Typos. I had seen them. A while ago, but I didn't realize we were. I thought this was a very. I didn't realize this. Was a short. Uh, Maybe we can table um, the minutes until yeah. next time. So. Yeah, we'll table the minutes. We'll make those edits, and then we'll pass them to our next meeting. Okay. So we are now into the variance hearing. Um, I've I've spelled out there in the agenda how this, uh, according to our rules, will run. So this uh, is the hearing for what's in your packet. I will ask Eric to present if he's ready on the item after that. We'll have a chance to ask Eric questions. After that, we will ask the applicant um, to make a, uh, their presentation. And then all the members of the public who are here tonight can speak. And then after that, um, we can ask questions. And then we'll go ahead and um, discuss what we want to do. So with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. Thank you. Good to see everyone this evening. Um, Mr. Evans is present with us tonight, and the lot in question is, uh, if you take, you can look at the, uh, the, 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 the package there, the color map from the otter, specifically for the record, it's parcel number 11300928 at the uh, corner of Wildwood and Cardinal. Um, it, Currently, is a vacant lot. Uh, it's been vacant for some time. Mr. Evans uh, contacted us back in <coughs> Aprilish to inquire about it, and I talked to the um, as well as the um, ownership of the lot, and uh, we received several calls as they had put it up for sale. Um, Mr. Evans was uh, at the end of the day successful with his contract and recently closed on it. 
who he is now the um, full owner of said lot. So that said, it's an interesting little old lot uh, that is located in the corner. And if you look at the, there's two different site plans. One has a drawing of a potential house on it. I'm going to refer first to the drawing of the official survey, which was done by the, um, the seller, the last owner. And in this particular case, the issue at hand is you can see how the old flat set down the building lines. Uh, across the north of the lot is a 30-foot build line, which is consistent with, of course, everything else on either side of the street. Uh, and then this corner lot further uh, suffers, I will call it, from a building line set back from car. And it's 15 foot at that point. Um, furthermore, this is, an R, this is in our R3 district. Most of our homes uh, in the classic subdivision of uh, Minerva Park are in our R3 district. And as such, they're required to have a, a minimum side yard setback of 8 feet on, on at least one side. So that, of course, is the western side. The other side is dictated by a frontage. Uh, and so when you put it all together, you, you've got a little bitty rectangle. Um, unfortunately, I caught something on fire on my stove. I was busy drawing out, and I didn't have a chance. The council will have the pleasure of my finished drawing. But essentially, it will, um, it will, it, it leaves the area that they have to, it would not ask for variance, is a very thin, long house that can fit onto the site. Um, and so the applicant here has, is asking uh, for some leeway. And if we go then to the drawn picture, uh, this was done in concert with another uh, builder that he was interviewing at the time for uh, this was building on the lot. This essentially here is asking for a uh, six foot setback from the western side of the lot line and an eight foot um, <clears throat> distance to the right of way. So essentially, he, he, on this drawing, he's asking for two feet variance to the western setback and seven foot variance to the building lot line. And asking, he's putting the building right up on the 30 foot building line, feels he can meet that, no problem. As shown, the driveway will come off of Wildwood. Um, I would suggest that, you know, you make it an even five feet, because as we know in buildings, sometimes little six inches, five inches can happen here or there. Uh, it gives him a little more leeway from the, because I, I don't know uh, if he can answer the question. I don't know if he's settled on the builder yet. He may or may not have. So, so this is, yeah, so this is a proposed at this point, a proposed building uh, for that site. Um, but I don't see it unreasonable to ask roughly for uh, half, seven to eight feet of the building setback uh, on, the, on the eastern side and then vary a little bit towards the western lot. Um, as you can see, the, um, the neighbor on the uh, western side has a garage that's within inches of the lot line. So that would, you know, under current day scenario, they would, it's a, I would consider the legal not conforming it's been there for some time, but they would, you know, require a variance now for that as well. So um, these lots in general, as we know, are, as you can see, are pretty five foot wide, uh, probably a little, probably a little tight. So any assistance is appreciated in that regard. Uh, other than that, it's mostly it's western setback needs a small variance and then um, building line to the cardinal side. And that's all I've got. Okay. Uh, so now we are given the opportunity to ask Eric any questions that we might have. Um, just for my own <coughs> knowledge or enjoy. So if you go to this, this map effectively shows three parcels, right? And so if you look at the one yes. all the way to the west, yes. is that one, is, it looks like that is not probably eight feet from the lot line. Either. No, I would say that's probably within four feet of the lot line. So it's, 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 the photo is probably a little off, but it's, it's pretty close. It's safe to say that most of these houses, probably most of these houses are legal not As we talked about when we were going through the zoning, we're going to have to change the setbacks for this district, you know, or, or make a district that matches this, you know, Wildwoods lots are 55 foot in width in general, and we, you know, along the roadway, and we've got, we've got this all over the place. It's very common. <laughs> all right, so the, the build line along a right of way is 15, is standardly 15 feet off the road. Standardly is 20, 
to 25 feet, depending on the t in today's standards. Okay. When this but as, as as this standard is written, 15 foot is from the side one. Yeah. They, yeah. They thought that 30 feet would be obviously cut, but it would be not a usable lot. Right. Be more than that. So help me understand, just because I no question I've never had. What is the purpose for that setback? So typically, each community, you know, whether it's commercial buildings or whether it's residential buildings or industrial buildings. You see setbacks being from the road based on a couple factors. Um, aesthetics is obviously a big part of that. You look and feel in your subdivision of how close do you want someone's house? Where is the quiet enjoyment point of how far back the house needs to be in relationship to a, to a residential roadway, to people walking along it? Um, it you know, generally the, the standards today are right around, because I think our new subdivision is 25 feet. That's typically an acceptable minimal distance to the roadway so that people can walk along a potential sidewalk or in cars, you know, and not be, and, and enjoy the, basically have a quiet enjoyment of their, you know, abode. Um, the 15 foot, interestingly enough, the 15 foot setback is obviously, set, this is a small cul-de-sac lot, so at the time, you know, many, many years back, they thought, well, we need at least some type of minimum setback from the roadway. Now, obviously, Cardinal gets far less traffic than say Wildwood. So I would say using, you know, you know, if we can <coughs> noise and all those other things, um, I would say probably it's not really an impact upon, you know, Mr. Evans' future house, you know, as far as roadway noise, because that's, that's a consideration. Obviously, setbacks along big arterials where you've got 45, 50 miles an hour have a lot more wheel, road wheel noise and truck noise, you know, and you set buildings back further, especially if they're residential buildings in general. It's not always the case, but that's the general rule of thumb. And then how does it feel when you put buildings on the roadway versus further back? You know, you, you want some neighborly feel. So again, it's, you know, closer is a bit more intimate, you know, from that standpoint, uh, whereas pushing it further back gives you much more privacy and aloofness, you know, in relationship to uh, the walking pedestrian or the driving public. And so those are the general concepts behind why they set things back or how they set things back. And I, I, I had a concern about the, the visibility safety issue, right? If you put it too close, then you're not going to be able to see around the corner. But the way that, I mean, I drove past again just before yeah. coming here, and with the driveway being on Wildwood and the way it's set back, I couldn't, couldn't imagine any kind of visibility. So was it the safety triangle yeah. issue? The final driveway, just so you're aware, the, the you know his house can be put in a certain place. There may be some adjustment to the driveway based on what the engineer's final review is, you know, in working with the, the uh, applicants, uh, other professionals. Right, but the house will be behind the house thirty foot building, building, building line, as shown. And so that, to me, is yeah. I mean, even if there was so that, that that keeps it quite frankly that keeps it consistent with the look along Wildwood. And so I don't have any objection to what they're proposing because of that. You know, if he's pushing up against the roadway now. It's, changes the feel of the neighborhood a little bit right there. It'll, it would look odd, too, so we, we have that aesthetic feel for the neighborhood. It would look a little strange, but it, it's not going to look out of place at that point. Yeah, so I guess where I was getting was that part of what I had always assumed the purpose of that off-the-road setback was for utility, underground utility, right? So there's water, sewer, that kind of stuff. Uh, but those are usually all right close in, within the right-of-way itself. Mm -hmm. The right-of-way extends probably up into that roadway 15 feet right there, 10 feet on the, on the front end. Right, so what I'm, I'm looking to get is where it would be nice, uh, I, and I know it's probably too late to know, but it would be nice to know where that is, to know if we are impeding the ability to maintain a water line, impeding the ability to maintain a sewer line. You are not. The builder he was working with, um, who has built several other houses here, uh, looked into that. Uh, Mr. Clark, Scott Clark did originally. Uh, electric, actually, uh, music store with the electric. Electric will have to come in from the front because when they drew up the easement, uh, it, it's in the rear there, but there's a, there's an easement that's missing. Although it's oddly enough, they're showing some easement on there when they did some work there. There is some easement missing, and they can't hold to his ground in the back. So you, they're going to bring the utility in from the front for this house. I spoke to AEP director, some weirdness there. Uh, so in order to get him electric. The neighbor next door, maybe they'll change their mind, but they didn't want to grant an easement to extend that. Okay. You may hear from them on, on the council. But the house would not, this, this 
proposed rectangle would not sit on anything no. existing. No. And, and, and just so everyone's or aware, when we go through the, the right when we, no, when we go through the permitting process, anyways, and all the professionals are then involved, like the GC, you know, who's coordinating the rest. That point, his job is to is to bring everything in. We don't approve anything that would be on top of a major line or anything like that, right? This doesn't work. They're responsible, you know, for moving. But I can tell you from his initial preliminary, you know, review and then discussion with me, there, there's not, he's not on top of anything right there. There's there's stuff on the roadway. Water line, I think, actually is across the roadway. Uh, um, he's got a board to get it over there. Yeah. So you can see the the hydrant on the other side of the street. So yeah. that's there. where the water line is. But, I mean, well, actually, let's roll down the road. Where's the hydrant down here? I don't know. Okay, I guess that's my only question at the moment. Other questions for staff? So, so the 15 foot building line on that. So I guess what is the, well, 15 foot building line, that would be the typical setback on Cardinal Court, is that right? Not, not typical. I mean, what they did is when they drew the plat up, I'm sure when they looked at it, they said, you know, and I'm just conjecturing, obviously if they made it a full 25 or 30 feet to match their building line across the north, it would truly be an unusable lot. So they, I think they made an arbitrary decision to shorten the building line as it was to put that Important because when they were designing this, they said, "Hey, we can get a few more houses in to get these. You know, these had the lots a certain size, and so they put this little court in there. And they're like, well, we can't make it a full 30 foot here, so we've got to shorten up that building line to get these lots." In. That was what was approved at the time, and obviously the developer is the one that drew this out. So then the request, then so the side yard is the request for the variance on the side yard setback. Two. It's two requests. Two, right? two requests. Yeah. So so by by code or by the whatever standard, you would need 15 feet on the east side and at least eight feet on the west side. So the variance is two feet on the west side and seven feet on the east side. So uh, <coughs> yes, you please eight feet off. Yes, that is correct, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any it's thoughts? Good math. Yeah. Any thoughts on how this affects the people further into the court? Basically, behind this. Well, there's a good amount of no. There's a good amount of distance between. You see how much. Rear yard. I, I, I would actually argue to get the same square footage if he was to meet the existing variance part, that would require him to make a much thinner, longer house, and therefore he'd be closer to his neighbors to the south versus this design, which actually gives him more yard space and therefore more separation of those people to the south. Yeah, if he, without a variance, it'd have to be 30, no more than 32 feet wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then to get the same square footage, you, it'd, it'd have to be a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> No, so there's no, nothing with, with the front that we're yep. concerned about. The front is totally in the line. Yes. Causes you to yep, correct. The full street divided by 32. It's just size. It's just size. It would have to be 59 and a half feet so, long. <clears throat> yep. Uh, <clears throat> this might not this might be like moving gun. forward, but like um, <laughs> when we grant the variances for like these shorter, narrow, narrower lots or whatever, mm -hmm. like if they wanted to say like put up a fence, I, I know, obviously I don't know what your plans are, like, do they have to then ask for a variance if they want to put, like, a fence? So, this is, that's an excellent question. He, if he wanted to do a fence, if he knew ahead of time, he could ask at this meeting for that variance, but obviously he's in the early stages of the church. But much like, if you recall, the corner lots that we ran into over, over in the new development, the code was changed because there's so many variance requests for corner lots because they couldn't come in front of that, that building line the way they put on those corner lots was right up against the house too, so they could not spread the fence into the into the building line there either. Sure. So they were asking for basically, you know, and that's a 25 foot, most people were asking for 12 or 13 foot into the building line. I think I think council settled on a 13 foot, you know, somewhere has to be right, right there, 12 and a half, 13. Gotcha. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it's 26 back. So most of those houses were 26 feet back from the roadway. So. Yes, in that in this case, he he would have to his housemates to we give him a variance for the house seven foot in there. He still couldn't put the fence into the building line without coming back to you for a variance. You know, and again, if you you With could without without a variance. Yeah, you could you could until the council you could make the recommendation that 
you know, fence would match the house corner, you know, and set back. That's a, a reasonable request, I think, um, to then go back from that point. And it would, it would even up with what you've done consistent wise with a new subdivision. So, but that's a good question. So I guess, um, back to sort of the original question, which is, you know, the two variances. So it seems like that there could be the 18 foot side yard. Eight, eight foot, eight foot. Well, 18 total, right? Isn't no. that what the side yard is supposed to be? 18 foot total? 18 foot total, but eight on the minimum. So, eight, um, so it's okay, just eight. can I finish my yeah. saying? Okay, so 18 foot total, eight foot on the one side, that would leave 10 foot on the roadway side. And they're asking for cutting it all back to cutting back to 14 foot. So, so that's the two. Like the two requests for the variance off the 15 foot off Cardinal and the variance off of the side yard setback for the east. So couldn't they just keep the side yard setback at eight foot on the, I guess on the west, no, I'm sorry. And then keep 10 foot on Cardinal Court so that that would fit in the 18 foot side yard setback, which is typical for lots in the so area? The answer is no. And the reason is because this is a corner lot. And you're not, if you had a normal lot, if you go to the neighbor next to them, or you go to any of the other ones that aren't on a, a corner line, in which you've got um, a stipulated building line by code, by plat, okay, then what you have, because you essentially on a corner lot you have two frontages, and only one side and one rear, okay? So the side yard becomes the, what the minimum dictation is in the code. In this case, the minimum requirement is eight feet of, per code. So they're required to have eight on that west side. There is no other side setback in this case. So on a normal lot, you're correct, 18 foot is what we tell people. We had another lot down the road, they were able to fit within eight and 10 on both sides, but it was a standard lot, not on a corner. So in this case, must have eight on the one side by code, and you must maintain your building line by plat. I think an easier way to say that is that this lot doesn't have two side yards. It has right. two frontages. Correct. One side yard and a back. So, are you saying that the eight foot is within code? Yes. Then the why eight, would no, we no, need the, a variance? No, the eight foot is not within code. Okay. I I was hearing the eight minimum foot is eight. per code. So they're okay, required okay. to have a minimum. Stop for a second. Yeah. At least, are you talking about the west or east side? Okay. Back. Right. I guess I thought I was if. hearing that eight was the minimum that you had to have. Right. So eight's the minimum for a side yard. So that's what we're talking about, the one that where they actually have a neighbor. Right. Okay. 15 is what they're supposed to have for On what we'll call the cardinal frontage. frontage okay. Right? So we're not, so that's what you're saying. It's, two, two it's not two side yards, right. it's two front yards. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's what we'll call gotcha. it the cardinal frontage is supposed to be 15, and they're asking to have it be 8. Okay. Then, there's an exi then, then the side yard is supposed to be 8, and they're asking for 5 or 6. Sorry, I just wanted to make yeah, sure that, yeah, that yeah, number eight absolutely. because it happens twice. Yes. yes. Just wait until I need the variance. I have two fronts and two sides. I don't have a back. You've got a, there's, there's always a rear. <laughs> no, I don't have a rear. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll discuss that interpretation. <laughs> 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 I have street frontage on both sides. Yes. That is true. Yes, we do have frontage on both sides. I know this one. That'll be interesting. <laughs> More questions on this variance. We're not doing yours. Look at that. We're out. We're out. Any more questions for staff? Mm -hmm. How does it meet the um, lot requirements. I'm sorry? The lot requirements. You mean the coverage? Yeah, the lot coverage. Oh, sorry. The lot. Sorry. As shown, but <coughs> I'm saying that this isn't necessarily a plan that's going to happen. Not necessarily. And so if you grade this and something goes wrong, you would have to come back in to alter this with another request. So, um, He's trying to come in. I, I think no, I and you'll have to speak to it at your time. But you're generally happy with, I mean, with what's been proposed by one of the builders here, correct? Correct. Um, my efforts are only just to make sure that this lot is buildable. Is the whole thing. I, I didn't just want to buy a piece of land and then figure out a uh, later that you can't even put a house on this thing. So um, I've been talking. Um, with the builder who has built a couple houses around here and uh, with Eric you know I've kind of come to the conclusion that you can build something on here it just has to be reasonable you know and that's why I'm here just to ask for a few feet on each side whatever it came to um, that's what the builder 
the builder, going back a little bit, pretty much what he told me is that he only builds one house. There is a house like it, I don't know, it's, it's in this neighborhood. And so he just basically said, if you want this house, we can put it on this piece of property here. And that's what I would, I'm seeking. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to build that house. Um, I'm not even 100% sure that that house is buildable here because there is some issues with obtaining water access and how far you can bring it into the land, I guess. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess I'm just trying to like figure out if I can build a house here and I'm, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, I was supposed to go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, I was basically done. You know, I was just, right. just trying to get something done here and not trying to stretch it out for a yeah, no worries. So, so what he's proposing is, just to answer the best question real quick. So the house, as shown, gets about 1886 square feet, you know, with that footprint, a little more than that. Uh, the lot size is roughly 7150. It's roughly 26% coverage. He's underneath the 30% requirement, you know, within this current district, which I will tell you again, we will alter when the time comes. So, but he's not, that this, as shown, doesn't require a variance under this <coughs> You had mentioned that you know he had proposed this house, right? And then you were saying like, okay, if this house were here, it would be this dimension. I'm assuming the variance you're asking for is the maximum. You know, you ask, you know, if you decide to make some tweaks or something, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, honestly, you know, in, in talking to that builder, this is probably the most house that I would really want. Anyways, okay. Um, so I just kind of figured if this was approved, then I could always go slim it down and not, you know, no, not hold out, it. but yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, let's let's go ahead and move on and if, let's start with your presentation. Know if there's anything, anything you want to add, anything you want to say, or if you want to give a full, a full talk, let us know what. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I've basically already kind of uh, kind of gone over it. You know, I, I, I just um, you know I've been in contract with the land for like a long time, and it was just ongoing and ongoing and ongoing. Um, and, and again, I just really wanted to figure out if I could put a house on this piece of land, you know, with it being um, you know slim or smaller, you know. And um, come to find out, I think I can. There are some obstacles with it. Um, but in the end, I, I think it's doable, and I'm going to give my best shot to get it done. Um, I don't know exactly when, um, but first things first, you know, I did purchase the land, and you know, we're here. So, uh, if you guys have any questions for me, I'm open to answer them. Is the house for you? Okay. So I'm curious, this is probably for Eric. This, he's saying this is the largest house he'd probably build. If he's doing smaller but still needs the variance, does he need to come back? Or would no, no, a different he, dimension? He a, smaller, a smaller house dimension, you know, he, he has some room at 26% under the current code. If, if, even if he wanted to make it a little bigger, he could go a little south with the square footage, right? Mm -hmm. He could just go a little south. Now keep in mind, this is a footprint, so the, the, the lot coverage is based on the footprint. This could always be a two-story house with the basement. I mean, it, it would give him, you know, the footprint's 1886. Now, of course, you've got a driveway. There's going to be a garage. There's be a second floor, probably, potentially something upstairs. And with the basement, I mean, he'll, he'll have a significant square footage with this footprint. I mean, you, you could have a good amount here. Um, you would not need to go out any wider, you, you know, to get bigger. You can still go south a little bit. So if he went bigger, he'd need more variance. If he went if he wider, goes smaller, but, doesn't he, can, he can still extend good. himself south. He's got some room to work. This would give him, like I said, this is probably a max. I think it's a reasonable max ask for this lot, and you know, it, it gives him a decent amount to work with, one way or the other. So, okay. this, so this this variance is going to lock him in east and west to no bigger than. Okay. Yeah, correct. Right. It, yeah. it just was a curiosity, not yeah. anything about the case. So. What is the. Um, Limits to like the south, I guess, of that lot. He has to be. 
I think it's, he's got to be at least 25 foot from the rear. But again, his, his limiting factor in this case is how big the primary right. structure is, footprint wide, percentage wise, to the lot as a whole. Gotcha. So he's got about, you know, under this scenario, he's got four ish to five percent more that he can add to the overall footprint. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So That's if you wanted to do that. Okay, like how, how long is the lot? Well, like north to south. The lot is 55. Well, the, the lot's width is 55. The length is 130 feet on the one side. Now there's a curvature there. So the full length on the west side is 149 and some change. So it's a good, it, it's a long, you know, it's got some length to it. Okay. Right. I just didn't see it on there. So yeah, yeah. It's on, the, it's on the survey they did. It's up against the line where the coordinates are. Okay. And then I think, I think the auditor's got it on theirs too. <laughs> Are you planning a two or a one story? Two. Mm -hmm. My goal is to put a house on it but still have some sort of resemblance of a backyard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just if I put a ranch on there, it would just be the entire thing, mm -hmm. which I'm not even sure you can do, but I just figured two stories. Okay. But then we're talking, you said this was about 1800. About 1900, actually, 1880. So if there are two stories, it's going to be mm -hmm. yes, the, twice the, that. The, the footprint, he's allowed to go up. Mm -hmm. He's not asking for a variance for right. his height. He's allowed to go up to a certain height <coughs> and put two stories here. The footprint is what, the footprint dictates the percentage of lot coverage. Not the height, not the full not the square footage. Yeah, not the total square footage. But could that change our decision to extend it? No. If we know it's going to be. Mm -mm, no. Because it's still the footprint. I mean, if you're doing a garage and all that kind of stuff, that's not going to count in your square footage. Yeah. So if he puts a two car garage or something like that, if we're talking just footprint mm -hmm. and he actually is part of that is going to be his garage, it's not going to be a yeah. 1,900 square foot house. The, the primary, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the primary. Residence footprint in relation to the rest of the lot is how you calculate the percentage. The percentage restriction is 30%. At this particular point, he's roughly 26%. Mm -hmm. Where is that? So he's okay. Okay. Any more questions? Um, say more about the driveway. You said that they have to do engineering. I'm just looking at how close that is. To yeah, that will be during, and I'm perm about that. during permitting. That's going to be the decision that the engineer will have a, a gander at that and just make sure that distance is correct before we approve the permit. And you know they'll work with them on where they stick it. Okay. Any more? Any more questions? This is where we would recognize members of the public to speak. Okay, we'll move on. Um, so, public comment period is closed. We can discuss this among ourselves um, and or uh, entertain a, a motion. And the options we would have for a motion are to recommend this acceptance uh, to council, to recommend disapproval to council, or to recommend it with modifications. I will say I have no reservation in recommending this for approval to council. I also don't. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the only, you know, the, the only questions in my mind that remain would be the, the thoughts of, of the neighbors to the west. Mm -hmm. um, they are not required to be noticed mm -hmm. for this meeting, but they are required to be noticed for the council meeting. Mm -hmm. And so, as, as yeah. we have not heard anything from them, um, I don't have any, anything up to that. that. That can be council's problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which also is our problem. That's why so, you guys, Brian. Like, that's why <laughs> like, wait, wait, Brian, that's us. Just kick that's, the can down the road. That's <laughs> Thursday Brian's problem? Right. He's a jerk anyway. That's why you guys <laughs> make, the, make the big bucks. Um, and I would say I would um, like to recommend it with modifications that the side door, the setback on the west be eight feet, and that the and that it keeps with the uh, 30, 15 foot um, setback on the cardinal court side, which would leave you a thirty two foot white house. 
But so, so that, that means not going to be disapproving the variance. Yeah, right. Not be disapproving it. Yeah. Wouldn't we still have to have a variance for side yard setbacks? Because no. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, what that's... you what you described was exactly as code would specify. Well, that's what I thought. You guys kept contradicting me. I thought no. I was asking that. All right. I guess it wasn't clear. But so I. I think it should be eight foot on west and the fifteen foot. It's a thirty-two foot wide house, which the house next to it's twenty-seven feet wide. There's other ones around the neighborhood. There was a brand new one built that was uh, thirty-two feet wide. Um, there was another one built uh, recently that was twenty-nine feet wide. Um, so I think that a, a nice house can be built in the width that's permissible on that lot. Fair enough. Okay. So I don't see the I don't see the hardship. I guess is you know I guess that's my Okay. Okay. Any, anybody else have something to say? Uh, sure, we can actually try to step on you. Okay. Um, any any way you like to make a motion? Uh, so I will make a motion that we uh, approve, uh, or that we, I will make a motion that we recommend to approve the two variances as described. I'll second it. Okay, uh, we will take So the roll vote. call vote? I don't know if it's a roll call vote or just, yeah, just, just, roll call yeah. vote just making sure. Voting numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me think about all who, who all my voting members are. Okay, councilperson, uh, can I, do I use you as councilperson? Councilperson, council let's liaison. use council liaison. Uh, Wolf. Yeah, I. Can I just call him by name? Uh, you can, I can say yes. You okay. <laughs> Brady Oxender. Yes. Beth McFarland. Okay, and then I'm Tiffany. I'm yes. And then who's my last voting? We don't it's four. Have. Is it four? Yeah, because we need to. Oh replace. yeah. Okay. We didn't step anybody up. We haven't stepped anybody. Uh -uh. Okay. 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 Four members and three to one. Okay. Very good. So okay. we are. So we will. Um, we have to submit in writing. Uh, we will make a note that it was a three to one vote. Mm -hmm. um, to approve, and we will get that submitted within the next 24 hours so the council can move forward. Are you doing that? Is Eric doing that? Am I, I who's I doing that? Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I just want to make sure who's doing it. Awesome. Okay, so this is this, this was the only uh, agenda item for today. Just to let folks know, we're going to try and get all of the code rewrite recommendations done through that first filter that was, you know, the, the small working group. And then we're just going to probably meet fairly regularly, you know, every other week in, in mostly work sessions to try and just hammer through as much as possible so that we're not the ones holding things up. Yep. Um, and then, of course, looking for anything else, you know, we are to be evaluating potential improvements and, and things we'd like to see throughout the village. And so if, if you see something that you want to see, then let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, one piece of bad news, we did not get funding for the trail improvements in the Capitol Bill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm incredibly salty about it. It's always next to the budget. Yeah, we've got, we've got more bites at, at the apple, but, uh, you know, to boil things down, I am chalking it up to redistricting. Um, they waited until folks found out their districts where they would be running. Um, and then we have a, you know, we have a Democrat in our Senate district who is trying to be reelected. Um, so her projects were not funded. We have, we will have a new state representative either way. Um, so there is no accountability either way. So um, our sitting state reps projects were not funded. Um, the senator who represents Hilliard, who is in the majority and drawn into a new district, got three and a half million dollars for parks in her district. Go figure. So um, again, I am salty, but we'll uh, we'll move on and, and see if we can't get another stab at it when we can. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. Does anybody have any final thoughts? Yeah. For the amphitheater, we actually may have to get more money than just a uh, hmm? yeah. 
So we're turning our application this week. Oh, okay. There will be about a 90 day approval period. Fingers uh, crossed. Before we start getting reimbursed. Yeah. And then um, the approval is going to be really good. Looks like about two thirds back. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A dollar for every 50 cents we spend. So awesome. not bad. Better. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So awesome. Okay. I don't know if it's here. I can send an email for only police have responded. But the next day, the grass didn't even mow over in around the ponds. But I'm always wondering about like the flower beds over there, the tree beds over there. I've never mulched, and they're really weedy. We have somebody that's starting it okay. this week. And Quietvale, what is the aspect of why that pond looks like a total weeds? Like it's never mowed around there, and like there's this one bench. And I'm like, why anybody want to sit there? Because the path to it is no bigger than one of these <laughs> Right. So that was that was an intention mm -hmm. uh, by by planning its own in uh, yes. to leave it natural and see what happens. Yeah. The the plan was to have it mowed around the bench so that it could be easily accessed. I have not been out to look at it this year. They have cut what they were supposed to cut, and they're not cutting anything more than what they're supposed to cut at this point in time. Is there where the neighbors <coughs> mowing the grass? I've cut them a couple times. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he's done it this year. No, no he was, not yet. Yeah. He was told to keep an eye on it. Yeah. So that was the, that was at the discretion of planning and zoning to not do it. Because I just think that pond looks like crap, and I don't know what those like. Are they invasive trees or something that are like? The, 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 are those I was trees? asking you about the alder trees, right? Yeah. And they're taking them over. Yeah, what they are should be there. Well, alders. Alders, because like, I don't, like, all of a sudden, I'm like, dang, those yeah. things are, like... They're taking they're, over the entire trail. Yeah, I know. It's like, I don't get <laughs> this whole right. other area. Well, sounds like we should have filter. So, yeah. Yeah. I would say can. I know people who like how that looks. Yeah. Uh, I, it might just depend on... Right. Well, it does depend on your aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. I don't um, disagree with you, but she is correct. Yeah. Because I used to look yeah. like thistles. If it had flowers, I would probably, like, think it would look nice. Yeah. But to me, it does yeah. probably do that. And then, like, even up along the walkway, yeah. like above the tunnel, like by the sidewalk. I mean, yes, it's on the side of the fence, but it's like tall, almost thistle-looking like things. A lot of thistle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is um, yeah. the way it's going to be at this point in time until someone changes it. Well, yeah. we we I think <laughs> that if we could find some native plants that we wouldn't have to take much care of that might flower and maybe could push out some of the thistle, then right. maybe Marios would like that. So yeah, as long that's a great idea. Um, but as long as weather holds up, we do have some people that are going to start one at a time. We did have those um, flower beds done last year one time. Um, and there are a couple that we're not going to do. We're just going to let the grass grow back around. I mean, am I put those in and I'm just going to say for a lot of it's too much work. There's like five flower beds around there and they've just never been done. Yeah. And we will probably do the ones just along the path, yeah. just being honest at this point. Um, but that's the goal is to get those ones done uh, in front of each one of those. We actually drove out there today and showed them which ones they were going to be working on. And it's our um, part-time maintenance people that will be shooting to get them done. We'll see. Well, I think to some of the thought was that it's expensive to maintain it, to mow it. Like, wasn't when MI was doing it, it was like thirty thousand dollars for the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I think correct. that's correct. That so is correct. To do what to they're do. already doing now. Yeah, that is what they're doing right now. They are pretty much doing exactly what MI was doing um, as of right now, and our maintenance department has been able to keep up with it, um, but not anything extra. So, and you know, again, they do all of this section and all of that section. We have uh, one part time and two seasonals. We had, um, let's rephrase that. We have a one seasonal, one quit, and we have a helper right now. So they're getting, I'm not saying that so that's, staffing's, part of the staffing's been an issue for three years and <laughs> we've raised the salary, we've raised the pay, we've done all of that. I have put ads in um, and honestly we've gotten zero from the ads that we've put in, not one contact. Mm -hmm. So wages is still clearly an issue. Well, yeah, not one email. So we're getting um, some college kids. That's, that's the response. We've gotten a high school kid and a college kid mm -hmm. from the neighborhood. Mm 
<laughs> that's it. So yes, they are even working like on it. Twice if you get the mulch down, you right. don't have to do exactly to it. That's yeah. that is the current goal right now is those flower beds. That is a pet peeve of mine, and I walk past them every day, and it drives me crazy. Yeah. So I am that person that I hate the way it looks over there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, let's plan some time while the weather's nice mm -hmm. to go look at Absolutely. the fiber pond and see if there's an idea for mm -hmm. some, some natives that might be. Yes. So, go I was going to say, what do you think of the lily pond? I like that area. So that kind of look where it's a little wild, but it's sort of so somewhat intentional yeah. flower, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think the, that one that I think doesn't have much appeal to, it, to me. So. I think the mow it all and putting chemicals on it, guys, is not here anymore. So I think we're all on a similar page. Who was that? Was <laughs> Who? <laughs> For the record, I have people that are wanting some chemicals on some stuff because kids are getting stung by bees in multiple areas, and I'm just warning you that we have we we are not doing it right now, and there's some. Yeah, if you spray things, you'll, you'll kill the bees. Yes. No Thanks, no, I appreciate it. Buddy. Thank you. If there's something going on on Thursday, right, like I won't be able to make it. Thursday. Work, so we'll tell know. council that you can make this okay. job. Call or yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be in contact if anything right. comes up. Thank you. Thanks Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. It's so it's a, nothing's being treated. No, we have not sprayed one chemical on anything. Is that just policy? Like, no, we do, we have some council members that aren't interested, and I haven't tried it since. Gotcha. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yes, we have some count. We. Um, I brought it to council last year, and the answer was no. They did not want to spray. Two years ago, I think we got something sprayed. Two years ago, we did get a little bit sprayed somewhere. Um, but some people like the dandelions. They like those kinds of things. I am not a fan, and I did not win. I like dandelions. Some do. Yeah, there's there's nothing wrong with it. They do help the bees. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, so, yes. Did you know? Uh, they're spray for mosquitoes. Yeah, that's not that's not um, as far as mosquito spraying goes, we will be spraying for mosquitoes anytime West Nile or anything is caught in the, that. We still have that exact same contract, yes. Are you saying that we have to do that? But that's not a Minerva choice, that's the, the what? county? What? Well, spraying for mosquitoes? No, nope. so we don't we, have to do it. We, have, we sign we, a contract. We have a contract with the county. To ten, so what the county is doing is they are they have traps and they are catching mosquitoes and then testing those mosquitoes. If West Nile is found, then they're going to come and spray. But if West Nile isn't found, uh, or any other, there, I think there might have been several. Yeah, it might be like uh, what's the the Z1 Zika virus yeah. and West Nile and. There's a couple other nasty things. But that's that our about. choice to have them, or they're no, not making once, us do once, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We engage in the contract. Okay. So, but yeah, once it, but the contract triggers to come and spray should one of those things happen. There is for your well, knowledge. Now that, now that Tiffany's out of the room, though, yeah. hmm? let's real quick all recommend bat houses everywhere. Uh, uh, yes. I'm down for bat houses. Everybody's on board. All right, let's, let's move which is I think I've called out some of mm -hmm. yeah. So then the, the deal with the not treating the lawn is about the bees or is it something else? Just in general. Some people just don't want to waste uh, I'm gonna say it and some money. people don't want to waste the money. Some people it's not even about money. They just don't want to do it. They don't care if it's free and have it yeah, yeah they don't want yeah. to do it, which is yeah, I mean everybody it's environmental. Uh, yeah, some, there's some a couple just, different views of it. Mm -hmm. you know, you some can, like it. You can have more of a wider discussion, right? So, I mean, from a personal standpoint, I have some treatments on my lawn. I won't let them spray any toxic neurotoxins for the insects. I have them use pellets, you know, so sprays, the sprays go in all directions. And I mostly handle so I don't get crabgrass and certain weeds in my yard. But it's, it's you can make hybrid decisions too, right? Mm -hmm. There's also like runoff, right? So, runoff, yep. there's the chemicals mm -hmm. into the streams, the reserves, yep. everything else. So, I, I get that, but. Yeah. Some yards really need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I think too, when you're as as a community, you're not doing it. I mean, if you want your residents to do it, you can't. If you're not doing it yourself, right. then we just you want can't them to move six but inches or less. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. And we don't have an ordinance that you have to that you can't 
They you can grow. Trade. You can have a whole. And most most yeah. most municipalities don't make you go after dandelions and stuff like that. You just have. You can't have certain noxious species, right? So if you get yeah. a yard full of poison ivy, we are going to come talk to you. Yes, that's a no-no. But but you know some people do live things. But if it's just dandelions, which are non-noxious, you can have a whole yard of them. You just got to keep them below six inches. I do believe there is a line in that code that allows for prairie reclamation too. So if you for for a certain management, yeah, yeah I think you're, you're correct. There is so you you can if you it's all native and prairie reclamation. There's there's ways to it's when you're letting the, it's right? when you're letting the weeds reclaim your mulch bed. That's a you, you got to mow it. You know, you first know, you got to define a weed. Was that a new ordinance? Mm -hmm. It seems uh, like there, well, somebody was it trying was, to do that in here a few years ago. We did it back when I started in 17. We, we adjusted. Yeah, we had it to chapter 6. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. Real quick. Um, Northland Plaza Drive. They're going to fix the potholes. They still, yes. We have signed. We have done everything. It's just, they are backed up. Okay. So they have not been out. I have emailed them about five times, and they have not responded back when they're going to be here. Is that the service room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right by the massage parlor or whatever. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. We have we've authorized them to do it. It's the same person that we've used, and they have not responded back. Kurt is paving, so yeah, we're just waiting. Gotcha. All right. Does anybody have any business? No. Okay. We'll go ahead and adjourn. When do you think the next meeting will be? I'm going to be gone in time in July. It'll be. But we'll be in July. In July. I would say it would be probably, we're probably looking at, I guess, the 13th since the 6th is only two days after the 4th of July. That's all I mean. Um, I haven't had one or the 6th. Yeah. I do a back to back I would say probably July 20th. 20th. I will not be. I'm pretty sure it will be. And it will be, you know, barring anything crazy that comes up, it'll just be co review. So yeah, it'll be a work session, so it won't. Um, um, won't be joyous. <laughs> and then. It was exciting. So, I know. Uh, the way it yeah, is, is that the owner is required to maintain uh, exterior property free from weeds or plant growth, including grasses in excess of six inches. But then in plant growth definition, uh, it is this term does not include cultivated flowers and gardens, natural plantings of native wild plants, and accepted cultivars of wild plants. <coughs> are a recognized type of landscaping. So if you have an entire yard of nothing but native wildflowers, there is there is no need to mow. No. Unless, unless I've been you put a on. single bed in of something else, <laughs> and then it can be argued that the rest of it is not, that you only have one piece of landscaping and the rest is in your own yard. <laughs> quite interpret like that, but that's interesting. Depending trees. on who's doing the interpreting. Mm -hmm. the, well, that's the thing. People can have a whole forest in their front yard. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it's a perfectly reasonable thing. The gal up the road. Yeah. And that's not an issue. No, the gal up the road. Uh, she's, she's building the house and she's leaving. Uh, yeah. That's basically. Uh, sure that's, yeah. Susan? Susan. Yes. Nicely. Between yeah. uh, the Eichmanns yes. and yeah. what used to be Scott Hansen, and I don't know who's yeah. there now. The former one? Next one? Oh, she's still there? I don't know. I thought she left. No, I, thought I they think sold. there's somebody else there. Okay. I think she sold it. Yeah, it's, it, it's nice. I like it. Unique. Cool. All right. Well, let's Thanks get all. the hell out of here. You'll be happy to know. Got all your houses are all my, I got like, <laughs> I got to drop one. I got to drop four plants off of my barber's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, like, I, I mean, there, there were a hundred. There were there were a hundred of them. Oh my god. I mean it, it, it all depends on what you're counting as a hosta, right? Like if if a single root with two stems growing off, yeah. then we had hundreds. Yeah. Oh sure. Uh, That's but it was you know the, the entire side depth I guess of my house. We have a sidewalk. And it was at least three years overdue for thinning. And so they all just grew up like over the sidewalk, and then my kid can't ride his tricycle, and, and then we can't really mow it properly, and so I just tore them all out and gave pretty much all of them. Well, I transferred their house to third, and then gave them probably all the previous owner. Oh, so when our when when our house was our house was built by the Volpe's. So Reno lives on Wildwood. 
and he's got the big like fountain in his front yard, oh, big okay, yeah. and he runs Reno's florist. So he started his floral business in my basement. Huh. He um, was he lived there? Yeah. He grew As up as a kid? There. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he grew up there. Uh, okay. And so, you know, we have a greenhouse attached to the back of the house. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, at this point, completely not a bunch of But we have a greenhouse. We've got a... a we used Did you to hear have, that? Found out we used to have two fountains. I do still have my mulberry tree. If you, Lisa, not? if you want to pay to double insulate the windows and put a ventilation system in, I will give you three quarters of the greenhouse to do whatever you want in it. I just want to oh. grow my lemon in my life. You can have the rest of it. I have to pay? Just to get it up and running. You don't have to rent it. I you want just my, have to get I want my own greenhouse. Well, <laughs> we're going to be selling our house in about 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Ideal but one. we got enough room to put a greenhouse. We bought a tankless hot water yeah. heater, so we're going to sell the house when that craps out. I'm not <laughs> sure how we do that in our yard, though, because it's slanty and wet and I don't know. Well, ours was the, the previous years, like the Volpes had it and it was flourishing. They put an incredibly dangerous and illegal heater in it. <laughs> but it, like, they had it. And then at some point between the next two owners, they not only basically disconnected the water service out there, they disconnected the electric, they disconnected the gas. So the heater doesn't work, the lights don't work, the thermostat doesn't work, and we can't get. You can't heat it. Um, yeah, and so I put a new roof on it. It gets plenty hot right now, but too hot. Yeah. And then it gets plenty, it stays warmer than the rest, than the outside in the winter, but not warm enough to keep anything really alive. And so I plant lettuce in there, and it gets legs before there's a piece you can eat. <laughs> so if you want some really bitter greens, yeah. I can grow those for you in like Try three weeks. And then in the winter, we have to bring anything inside anyway, and we have no north-south facing windows, so we can't, or no east-west windows, so we can't, we have no natural sunlight. Yeah. So we have all kinds of Minerva Park swag. Ooh. Costume. <laughs> At least I haven't seen those, those alder trees in the uh, reserve quite a bit. They're going up everywhere. Yeah. And they grow fast. Very, very mm -hmm. fast. Kind of concerning. Talk to that one. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we could go out and knock them down, you know, get a group together. It does. It sounds like a good volunteer project. Do you, I mean, yeah. that's, that's, I, I, I actually had a question about that. I mean, like, if you wanted to go out in the reserve and remove, like, uh, invasive plants, I mean, would you have to get... We, we would just have to issue permission. Like, you, we can give you a blanket permission. The mayor can give you blanket permission to do so. So if that's what you want to do, she can send you an email and say, have at it. Have at it. I'd say if you do that, though, if you're inclined, put it out, because I know there are at least a few people that would be interested in doing that, yeah, really. or have said that they are. Yeah, you can, Nobody but, just wants to organize be, it, though. Right, right. To be yeah. official, send the mayor a request, mayor, can I go and remove native species from the blah, 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 from the reserves? Okay. And she'll say, and <laughs> can I organize other people and, and teams to do so? And she'll say, yes, you're in charge of the volunteers, enjoy yourself. I don't think that's going to be Have fun and yeah. take as many other people as you want. Gotcha. Alright. Thank you guys. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, let's turn those on.